خب بچه ها سلام امیدوارم که خوب باشی تقریبا یه دقیقه دیگه ام... با لیلی خواهیم بود درباره کیتوژنیک و لایو هم به انگلیسی خواهد بود ام... Lily, I think you need to, as soon as you join, you need to hit uh, request live and then um, I will see it here. Yes, so um, you will, as soon as you, if you scroll up, as soon as you joined, it will give you a bar from left to right and you hit on that request live. And I will receive the request and basically put you on. See if you can do that. If not, um, I'll figure out something else. Oh. خب بچه ها منتظر لیلی هستیم ببینیم که میدونم که توی لایف هست لیلی if um, if it's not working you can go live and I can join you either way oh there we go I think I got it Sorry, I'm not like connected properly yet, so I'm just gonna set up. Okay, you guys, just continue. I'm sorry. I was okay. okay. Oh well. Okay. Yeah, I know, that's right. fine. So I, I, I kind of like rushed to this, so okay. It's a mess, we can so. we can wait if you want to join us uh, in a little <laughs> no, bit. No, it's all right. Let's do it now. Let's do it now. I'm good. I'm good. All right. I'm a mess, perfect. but I'm good. Okay. okay. Where's your cat? Go. We love your cat. Oh, Hi. You. I'll show you her in a bit once this thing. Dang. Just. Be patient. Say hi, hi everyone. I'm so hi. sorry. I'm trying to get this thing to move. It's all right. Okay, I'm just gonna hold it. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. And uh, wait, wait, wait. Before we start, you're gonna build. You. You're gonna build yeah. some muscles. Hi. <laughs> okay. Looks like somebody doesn't exactly. like life. Okay. Well, thank you for having me, Mo. I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm my. so not together. You Rich are one of the first pages. Thank you. You are one of the first pages I started following and learning keto from. How do you oh come God, up with is... all these recipes? You know, I, I only ever do ink of recipes. It's crazy. I love baking. So, you know, and I didn't bake all the whole time when I first started keto. All right. For three years, I was off all the sugars and all that stuff. So kind of making up for lost time now. But, you know, but wait, I'm so happy to see you. This is our first live. And, this uh, is I, amazing. I, so... I know, right? Everyone's connected. The internet is fantastic. And my, my cat is, hey, Rich, is making so much noise. Um, it's all right. Let, let's, just, let's just continue, and I will try to um, get seated. Okay. See all right. This. So we're going to start with a little bit um, uh, you uh, opening to my audience. A lot of people, I, I doubt anybody has tried being on keto and they have not used your recipes, whether it's a dessert or food. You are, and in a minute, I'm gonna explain why. You and your page and your recipe is what makes people get more comfortable joining keto. They're like looking, I, I can make donuts, I can make dessert, I can make this, that, and still be on keto. Um, so there's no, no, um, uh, yes, with keto, there's no limitation. Right, there, there is no limitation. I mean, you know, the thing is, everyone thinks, they overthink things. Well, let's not talk about, like, um, treats, all right? Let's just talk about regular food. The thing is, a lot of people think that you're just going to have cheese and fatty meats, and that's it. And that's just so untrue. I mean, anything can be keto fight. You know, any food or any dessert, you just need to think, and you need to know how they ingredients work and that's just about you know all it takes that's all perfect but uh i'm still trying to figure this out so go ahead shoot let's just <laughs> talk about what you want to talk about yeah. let's go ahead and start 
let's tell us a little bit about uh was it three years ago when you first joined keto and how did you start were you baking as much what was your normal day when you were losing how much did you lose what was your success story because and what was the reason why how did you find out about keto what was your story because we see your success and we envy you all the time how did it start for you No, and uh, by the way, I did okay, turn off the good. comments, and we're going to go to them. I'm going to uh, open them in a sec um, after we're done talking. Okay. Great. Okay, it all started like this. Oh, by the way, I'm holding the phone. That's why my hand is like weird. Yeah, I don't have any. You're, are you sure you want to? We can give you some <laughs> time hour, to settle right? for an hour. For an hour? Okay. You're going to build Tell some muscles. What, I'm going to go grab my something, like maybe this okay, thingy here. Okay. okay. And uh, we'll go prop it up. Yeah. Yeah. Probably my. All right, perfect. I'm okay. going to tell uh, your right. audience. Not the best background, but... Uh, okay, that's, that, that's great. I'm just going to tell you that here in Houston, it's 78 degrees. It's fantastic. I'm in my backyard, and there's a nice breeze. Well, it's 11 o'clock. Hopefully, I'm not waking up anybody in my backyard, but I'm having fun. So grateful to do this live with you. Oh, no, I am so grateful, too. I thought, you know, you're just so dedicated. You actually walk the talk and that's that's great you know a lot of people get onto keto and they don't they're not really informed and well, you have all your information on point i appreciate that you know and you actually take the time to take you. sources from other places and you translate it for your followers and i think that's just awesome because not many people would take the time or the trouble and i know you're busy most so you know by the way i like your fairy lights thank okay. you but let me talk about um how you started she, it she's being me Oh. Okay, I actually started keto in 2014, actually, okay? And it was in November. What happened was I had gotten so fat, I couldn't breathe. I just couldn't breathe at all. And every time I sat down, it was like this huge thing was in my throat. And if I tried to lie down, that was even worse, you know, because, you know, you got all of that, right? right? And so it was breathing problems for me. And then it got to a point where I started having chest pains and I thought I was having a heart attack. Seriously, swear to God, I thought I had a heart issue. So what happened was I actually went to see a cardiologist who put me through um, all, the, all the tests, you know, the stress tests and the scans and all that. And he said, good news is you don't have a heart problem. Bad news is you have diabetes, right? And I was like, oh. Because my whole history of diabetes it's really strong in my family my mom has it she's um insulin dependent my grandma and this is the first time you're hearing about this and the thing is i never ate much sugar that was the whole point and i tried to argue with the doctor i said hey i don't even eat sugar you know processed carbs right your rice and all that because i'm asian i didn't understand any of that so in the end he just said look the blood test shows that you're diabetic i'm putting you on genumet Like, what the hell is that right it's a diabetic drug okay it controls your insulin basically and he said i'm sorry you have to go on it if it gets any worse you'll be like you could die so <laughs> i i'm guessing sorry. when you mentioned insulin controls your insulin you it was type 2 it was already of course no it's always type 2 i wasn't yes. born with it. if you're born with it then it's type 1 right your body yes. cannot produce just insulin. to clarify that Right. If you're type 2, it means that your body is incapable of gauging how much insulin to release. All right. Mm -hmm. So all of us who get it later in life, we are all type 2. If you're type 1, then nothing can help you, sadly. Right. Yeah. You can eat well and try to control, you know, all the spikes naturally or, you know, but there's nothing much you can do. So anyway. Pure wise is not. And uh, when I heard that, I cried. I sat down and I cried because I was thinking, oh, my God. God, right? Diabetes. I've got to be on this drug forever. I tried to lose weight. He said, the only way you can probably lose weight and try to fix this, okay? But it's no guarantee, he said. And I thought, okay. So what I did was I tried to go on all sorts of diets. You know, I did the cabbage diet. I did, the, I did paleo. I did, oh my God, every damn thing, even the egg fast. And I did lose weight initially. But as you know, if you can't sustain something, it's really not good news, okay? Most and, of the diets I, for everyone, it's not sustainable, correct? 
Exactly. And what happens is you actually end up putting back on the weight plus more. That's what usually happens. Okay. So anyway, to make things a bit, to speed things up. Finally, you know, I realized how desperate my situation when I saw my mom's friend get wheeled into her home one day. And that was in the middle of me trying to lose weight. And this lady had lost like her whole leg. Right? And I went, mom. And she's like, diabetes, you know, you better be careful. At that point, I didn't even tell my mom I had diabetes because I didn't want her to freak out. And that had been like three months after joining me. And when I saw Marianne, I just thought, shit, that could happen to me, right? So I need to do this. I can't like be la 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 anymore. And I also decided I didn't want to be on Janimet. So what happened was I sort of like asked around. And, and then my sister, this is the crazy part. My sister in Australia said, you know, I have a PT, a professional trainer, who has this diet um, that it really works. Do you want to try it? And that was before keto even really was a buzzword that it is today. What I didn't know was it was actually keto, okay? And, but they, they, she didn't name it that, but she was doing everything keto. And so I took that, I adhered to it, and my God, the weight just came up, boom, 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 boom. And I just sat there. I was happy, but I was, can I say pissed off at the same time? I was angry because I thought, shoot, you know, I've been walking around with 70, 80 pounds extra that I didn't need to for so many years. I've always been very small. I just suddenly blew up, I don't know, in hormones or whatever. But like after I turned 30, okay, it just, everything just went crazy. And uh, suddenly from very slim to like this, you know, it's a horrible feeling, especially when you bump into people and they're like, some people are real. What they do is they point in you, they, they, they start looking at you like that. And one lady actually pointed at me and you know what she did? An old friend. She just started laughing. She just started laughing. I was so <laughs> hurt. I just thought, you. I was hurt. I was so, I... so hurt. And anyway, anyway, so... I went from skinny to so I'm just fat. remembering my stories too, how I got laughed at. That's what, where my laugh was coming. When you're, when Every, you're yeah. What is your problem? Yes. You know, catch well, me. Well, we, me and my brother, me and my brother, we were working at the, uh, we we're still working at the same place. So he, ha he had started one year earlier than I had. And um, I think I was at his office and everybody thought that I am him. And as they were talking, they said, hi. Uh, and they said our last name. And at the end, they're like, what happened to you over summer? You look like you have gained weight. I'm like, no, that's my brother. That's, this is, this is well, the fat one. That's twins? the. Are you, are you guys twins or do you guys? <laughs> no, no, we're, we're few, we're few uh, years apart, but I was always the fat one. Well, comparing to him, we're he was always anymore, slim and sure. more athletic. Okay, okay, but so you know the feeling, right? It's, Absolutely. It's always a slap in the face. Yes. I mean, and it's terrible. I mean, people should be kind. That's what, that's what this whole process has taught me, and I'm sure it's taught you, is to be kind and don't judge. I mean, if people, you know, to be very honest, like, before I actually got fat and I got thin, I was always thin, right? So I used to look at it's fat, because fat. That's fat, okay? I mean, it's not politically correct. Some people don't like it, but let's just say... We're not trying fat, to be okay? offensive or anything, but, but fat women overweight. I'm, not, I'm, not being, I'm just saying it as it is, all right? So, so when I used to look at big people, fat people, I used to think, oh my gosh, she must, he, she must eat like a hog. Seriously, I mean, can't you control the way you eat, right? Okay? And then one day I woke up and I was there, okay? And I was like what I used to say other people were in. And then I realized, hey, I'm not eating more than I used to. You know, in fact, I'm eating less. And what I didn't understand was you, you can't control your calories, you know, expect to eat less and get skinny if your calories are not quality calories. And if you're still continuing with the carbs and the sugar, nothing's going to shift forever. Right, so that's what happened. Anyway, back to the story. Sorry, I just keep going on circles. I'm so excited. No, this is great. This is this okay. is great. We're so what happened was um, after I saw Marianne, and after my sister, whose name is also Marianne, by the way, she lives in Melbourne, uh, gave me her PT's contact number, and she was really kind. She helped me. Okay, I lost the weight. All of it, seventy 
75, 78 pounds almost in under eight months. Wow. Wow. Under eight months. So you see, oh, okay, I'm going to like go off tangent a bit and, and this is sort of like speed it up, but a lot of people wonder, am I doing keto right? You know, uh, how come I've only lost like um, 10 pounds in three months, okay? Or they go, you know, yay, I've lost 15 pounds and I've been on keto for eight months, you know? Sorry, but you're not in ketosis, all right? Yeah. If you are in ketosis, results are bam, 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 bam. They're so fast. It's like in a blink. Yes. And if you've lost weight thinking you're in keto, but it's really slow, you're probably too low carb. Which is a good thing. I think that any good eating plan or good eating habit that benefits you and makes you healthy is great. Okay, but if you're talking about keto and you're wondering why it's slow, it's generally because you're not in ketosis. That's all. You're okay. not in ketosis. So anyway, yes. let's just yeah, exactly. So there's no such thing as oh, another thing that irks me is, you know, I'm kind of sort of doing keto. <laughs> there's no kind of sort. You're either in ketosis or you're out. Of or you're not. Yeah. So you. You can't be like, oh, I eat keto Monday to Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday I go crazy. Okay, you, you blew it up. You blew it up all the. Exactly. It takes at least five to five days for your body to kick into ketosis mode. Okay, so by the time you're there, if you're a newbie, if you're there, and then suddenly you go crazy and you eat whatever. Okay, you've just undone all the work you've put in for the past five days, and you're back at square one, maybe two steps back. Yes. So you can't do that. Yet. So anyway, long story, I lost the weight in eight months. I've kept it off for five years, okay? It has been easy. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is that if you stay clean, you need to do clean keto if you want your weight to really drop. You can't be doing dirty keto. Dirty keto, I'm sorry, a lot of people no. don't get that because they practice it, but that is just not the kind of results you want and expect from a clean When you keto say... Diet. Yeah. When you say dirty keto, what are you specifically, what type of foods? Are you talking about uh, all these sugar substitutes, uh, flour, or, like all the dessert, or are you talking about processed food? I'm talking about any meat that doesn't look like it's come off the bone. If you're eating sausages, if you're eating prepacked burgers, if you're stopping in at fast food joints, all right, and getting a keto meal just because there's no bun, I'm sorry, you're just lying to yourself. Yeah. And the calories that you're getting, the nutrients, uh, the vitamins, the minerals that you're getting just isn't up to mark. So first of all, it's unhealthy. You will lose weight initially, but eventually it's going to come back because you're not doing it in a way that is good for your body. At one point, mm -hmm. your body say enough okay it's gonna stall so when i say clean keto what i really mean is um meat vegetables no keto sweeteners no keto flours um no coffee even okay and a lot of people go up in arms when they hear no coffee because they, they think bulletproof coffee. i was one of them <laughs> all right right now when you, you know. were yes now you know okay Caffeine, caffeine, coffee is not the problem. It's the caffeine. That was my next question. Yes, absolutely. So coffee. But, but before we get to coffee, so when you were in the process of losing the 70 something pounds, which you did a great job doing it in less than eight months. A lot of people cannot do that. And you, you say you owe it to clean keto. So all these desserts, yes. all these fantastic job happened afterwards this is the lily we are seeing yes. afterwards not within that eight months okay and i always tell people if you're going to do clean keto you have to stay clean as long as possible because the longer you stay clean the stronger your fat adaptation becomes fat adaptation yes. just means that your body learns to choose fat over carbs of any sort whether they're a processed carbs or their natural carbs or whatever, okay, it will always choose to burn the fat, yeah? And also, if you only eat something that wasn't good for you, your body wouldn't just go crazy and put that on the weight. It would know how to handle it. So the longer your fat adapted, the stronger your fat adaptation. That is key. That is really, really key. So for me, I didn't touch any keto treat <laughs> for three eight years. Eight months. What in the okay, first I eight? For three years. After 
from the time I started, three years, I didn't touch anything. I didn't touch anything wow. except clean meat okay, and vegetables and water. That's all I did. And that's why, I think that's why it's been so easy for me to maintain the weight because I've been fat adapted for so long. You see, it, it's been a really long time. And now, even if I were to go on a two week holiday and just eat nonsense, which I wouldn't because it would make me throw up. Uh, if I did, I'd come back just maybe a pound or two or three extra. And then once I go clean, bam, it's gone in a week, not even a week, maybe four days, you know? So the key point is to always maintain stay. that clean keto state for as long as possible if you want it to be effective. That's so the next question, talking, getting into the coffee and why you're um, in, I'm not, 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 not on the, I love coffee too, but yes, a lot of people think, stuff. okay, coffee, bulletproof coffee is the pillar no, of, of keto. And, and you have to add your butter. You have to add your uh, coconut oil into the coffee, mix it, drink it for your first meal of the day. That's like standard keto. And if you take it away, you're, you're not on ketosis. You don't get enough the fat. Your body is not going to build ketones and all of that. And I've been trying to explain that. What are your thoughts uh, on my page? And I get a lot of people attacking me about that. So be very okay. careful. That's Please don't I shoot the messenger. <laughs> Exactly. Okay, well, I'll explain it the way I see it. And you've been through it. We went through a keto reset. And I told you, you need to cut the coffee. And you saw the results. It shifted. Your yes. stall shifted. Why? Okay. After, after the fourth very, very day. Very, simple. Yes. Now, <laughs> the thing is, wait, two points here, okay? One, butter, bulletproof. Butter has no nutrients. Zero. Okay? It just tastes really good. And it's fat. Okay? It doesn't clog up your arteries, but nutrients-wise, it's on a very low end of the scale. Now, the reason you put butter into your bulletproof coffee is because your body's running on ketones, so it needs the fat to burn for fuel. So that's the only reason you're putting the butter in, all right? It's not so that you're nourishing your body, not at all. There's, well, I wouldn't say zero nutrients in it, but you know, there's very little. And when you're in keto, Oh, well, you're following the keto diet, you're already limiting how much you're eating. You don't need to eat much because a little goes a long way, all right? Because you're eating enough fat, your body feels full, your brain's telling you you don't need to eat for a while longer, and you stay full for a longer time. Now, the thing is, right, um, if you're eating so little, you better make sure whatever you're eating is good for you. For your body. <laughs> because you don't want your face to sag and your skin to look like crud and your teeth to fall out. Okay, I'm just being dramatic here, but you know what I mean, right? Nutrients are important. You must nourish your body. Think of eating as a chance for you to nourish your body each time you eat. It's not to just put food in or to make you feel wow, good or comforted or whatever. It's really to nutrify your body. So you need to think of it in that aspect and that really helps. Okay, now back to the caffeine. Am I talking too much? I no, no, no. You're I'm, I'm learning. Thank you. No, yes, absolutely. <laughs> and it always helps when it comes from another person. Say, oh, hey, I it's know, not right? only Muhammad. Like, he never listens to you. Yeah. <laughs> Mine doesn't. My sister doesn't. Okay, well, okay, caffeine, caffeine. Now, it's all about the caffeine. Now, caffeine for a lot of people, and you may not even realize it, for a lot of people, it does affect your um, insulin sensitivity not resistance but sensitivity all right resistance is you know your body just doesn't produce that stuff right all right so that's stopping the production at all if you're talking about sensitivity it's like you're confusing your system really it doesn't know how much to release it it's sort of like second guessing itself so caffeine does that to your body if you want to find out more please google okay but that's the outline the general outline now if you are sensitive to caffeine and you don't know it and you're chugging it down like you know, there's no tomorrow. What's going to happen is your weight is going to stop, all right? Because it's no good for your body. And the best way to find out is to actually stop the coffee. There's no point. Mo can tell you that. I can tell you that. But unless you experience the thing yourself, all right, and you go off the coffee and you realize, shoot, my skin looks clearer. My weight is shifting. And I feel great. I don't need this. Caffeine is a drug. 
coffee is a drug. Yeah. And one thing you have to know, for me anyway, I don't like being controlled by anything. I don't want to feel like I need to have this or else I won't be this vibe. Okay, so don't let the caffeine control you. A lot of people drink it because it's a habit. You don't need it. You really don't. You can go into ketosis with or without the coffee. So why not go without? You'll save a lot of money too. So so right. crazy thing about crazy thing about this is that Middle Easterns are not big in coffee. So we drink coffee, let's say in the US, it's like tea for us. So we drink tea in the morning. From okay. childhood, everybody drinks tea in the morning. So okay. a lot of people are drinking coffee and caffeine uh, mainly and solely because they think it's super important in ketogenic diet. One thing that is that is going to uh, decrease their appetite. It's going to kill their appetite. I have seen so many people. This is, I'm not even lying. There, I have seen so many people that they drink one coffee in the morning. They eat one bulletproof, sometimes with peanut butter in it, for their lunch. And they feel, they say, oh, I feel great. I feel so energetic. I'm not even hungry. And at the same time, they're doing it. But then they DM me. They go, I'm losing all my hair. Because it's stressing your body. Your body was not meant to function like that. The moment you stress your body by doing some weird crap like that, okay, it, it will go into protect mode. It's going to show you, hey, I don't like this, Mo, or I don't like this, Lil, okay? So how does it show you it's stress? That stuff like that. You start to look bad. Your hair starts to fall. Your gums start to get inflamed. All sorts of issues, yeah? And wait, going back to the issue of um, caffeine, okay, it's not just the coffee. It's in the tea as well. Caffeine is caffeine. It doesn't matter the source. Okay? Where it is. So just know that if it's caffeine, stop it. Try it. Okay? If you must have your coffee, go with decaf. But what's the problem? I mean, well, no, what's the problem? What's the, what's the point? What's the point, right? I mean, the whole point is that you want your coffee to smell like coffee and taste like coffee. And decaf is just water, right? So your body is not going to like it. All right? If you don't feed it, it's not going to like it. And when I say feed it, I don't mean like what you said, one coffee in the morning with butter in it or uh, spoon macros that is insane that yeah. is completely insane how can you live like this before you do anything very simple like sometimes people ask me stuff and then I give them my point of view and then they go oh but and then they still want to push their point you know and in the end I always tell them well just ask yourself one simple question am I nourishing my body by eating like this is this normal that's one. Number two, is this sustainable? Can I eat like this? Can I live like this for the rest of my life? If the answer is probably not, then it's bullshit. Okay, so can I say bullshit? Well, yeah, well, it's BS. Okay. <laughs> All right, you can't. You can't do that. So please be logical and use your common sense and practice keto properly. Keto, you know, a lot of people have this projection of keto that it's very unhealthy and it's like you're gonna just end up dying from it it's too high fat and you know you're not nourishing so that's precisely why people are getting this sort of like sort of like view of the, the our, our way of eating it's because of people who you just mentioned you know all they do is one bulletproof coffee a day do the crazy eat. stuff yeah I almost the crazy stuff right that is not even keto that's just weird <laughs> Yeah. I yeah. don't like I, I don't like when people define ketogenic diet as um a diet. First of all, I don't like the diet word. It's a lifestyle. It's right. it's uh, providing enough nutrients for your body. It's healing right. your body with natural food. One of the results is weight loss. So that that's how I see it and that's how we should see it. But it's not a, a diet that is high in fat only there are a lot of things attached oh, to it okay. to that 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 you should do to oh, you know okay. succeed I, I need to really go into this high in fat thing because it's really important if you're a newbie especially yeah now, okay can you talk about protein because my next my next question was what are your thoughts between the ratio of protein and fat uh, because I kind of have an okay, idea you know, I have because I did your keto reset. Go ahead. Now, 
you have to ask yourself, first of all, what is the end game? What is the target? What do you want to achieve from going keto? Okay, is it weight loss or is it weight maintenance or is it to improve your health? Now, let's just go on weight loss because that's the biggie, all right? Most people go on keto because of weight loss. Now, if weight loss is your intention, then you have to realize that you need to monitor how much protein you're eating, okay? And I won't talk about how other people do it. I'm gonna talk about how I do it, all right? And it's proven, and, I, and, and here are my reasons. I never track macros. My math is really bad, okay? So I never track macros, that's number one. But number two, I also realized that it's pointless, okay? Because you really need to learn to eat intuitively and to understand how much of what does what to your body, okay? And for me, I know that if I control my amount of protein, I can prevent gluconeogenesis, all right, which is your body converting unused protein to glucose, and then if it's not burned up, it gets converted to fat, and it's stored in your liver, and then everything goes to hell, okay? All right, so protein is key. Now, if you used protein as your building block, as the foundation to build everything else around your carbs, your vegetable carbs, as well as your fat, okay? then you are in full control. The problem is people usually do it backwards. They take the fat, okay? And then the protein around that fat, well, am I eating enough fat? That's not the right question to ask, okay? The right question to ask is, am I getting the right amount of protein? Number one, eating so that my body can go into ketosis and so that I avoid gluconeogenesis, all right? And that amount of protein is it fatty enough? All right, is there enough fat in that protein? If the answer is no, it's kind of lean. Okay, today I know I've had chicken breast and I usually try to avoid chicken breast because there's not enough fat in it. Then what I will do is I will up my fat percentage in other ways. I'll put on some fried pork belly skin or like pork lard or some extra butter or something just so that my body stays full. Okay, that fat is fuel. It tells you you're full. So basically, I put it in not because of, you know, I have to hit my macros, but because I know that if I didn't have enough fat in my body at that meal, even though I hit the correct protein amount, I'm not going to feel full. I'm going to look for food in the next one hour. And that shouldn't be the case because if you've had enough fat and your body is responding correctly, what happens is you will feel full for like three, four hours, no problem. And so, you know, get your protein amount correct. And it doesn't matter if you're 200 pounds <laughs> Or if you are 150 pounds, if you are 20 pounds overweight, or if you're 150 pounds overweight, the basis of how much protein you want to eat, okay, will remain the same if weight loss is your goal. And that's the way I mentor, well, whoever I'm mentoring, all right? Take it or leave it, basically, all right? Because I, 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 I know it works. I've seen it work. Many people have huge success from it. But if someone's going to argue with you, Mo, for like, oh my God, hours on end about how you are incorrect just just learn to go do what is best for your body whatever you think is best and walk away because in the end they're not gonna see it your way anyway yeah so protein protein is key and what the, this is important this is really important what i'm going to say now now and this i learned from jimmy moore okay because that was the first book i ever read and although there are other books out there in the market there are way more well uh sort of like scientifically sort of like more it has more scientific finesse okay whatever i like jimmy Moore. no matter what anyone says okay he guy may be a bit overweight now okay but you know i love the guy okay because that was the first book i read and it made a lot of sense now what he says is keto high fat right so everyone goes crazy with the fat my mother thinks i'm gonna die of a heart attack because she sees me eat pork belly and chicken the skin on and she goes, holy, what the hell are you doing, right? And I go, I'm fine, I'm fine. She doesn't believe me. Now, what she doesn't understand is high fat plus processed carbs equals heart attack. High fat plus zero processed carbs or a limited amount, you know, your vegetable carbs. You have no problems with your heart yet, no coronary issues, okay? So a lot of people 
go high fat thinking they're keto, but they cheat. They go, oh, I'm gonna have that one spoonful of noodle or one spoonful of rice, or they cheat and have like that donut or you know one bite of cake, and they've just buggered everything up because then that's not keto anymore. It's not clean, and you are going to put yourself in a lot of danger. You're putting yourself in harm's way if you do high fat and some processed carbs. Okay, it's not the same as it, you and me, okay? We're doing totally clean. We don't take or touch or even think or even go near processed carbs. But these people do occasionally and think it's okay. It's not. Unless you're carb cycling. That's a whole different thing Story. altogether. It's, it, yeah, it's that's not in stuff. process of, yes, correct. So the other thing, the other issue that I um, have a hard time explaining is I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the right amount of protein. We're not talking about extra protein, but at the same time, no, what a lot of people are afraid of protein. I have seen a lot of people that daily they take for the fact of gluconeogenesis and not turning into glucose under 30 grams, 40 grams of protein daily. And that's dangerous. Okay. Now those, those guys are looking at protein as a uh, net protein. Yeah, so they're not even just chocolate cake. The meat. They're looking at protein as <gasps> chocolate cake. Protein is not chocolate cake. It's not. It's not. I know the excess is going to turn to <laughs> glucose, but it's not going to turn to chocolate cake. <laughs> exactly. Right? They don't get it. And, and protein is your friend. Protein is not the enemy. Okay? Your your how much you're putting in okay you're not supposed to overeat remember keto versus paleo paleo is high fat high protein low carb yeah keto is high fat moderate, moderate. Protein, low carb yeah so as long as you get that moderate protein figure on point you're fine and you know what you need protein to muscle you do so, you know, if you're not trying to lose weight, let's say you're a serious bodybuilder and you really go and you pump the really heavy stuff, you're going to need to up your protein. But in the end, you burn it anyway. And you need that stuff for muscle. Okay? All right? So, you, it's, it's very silly to not eat your protein. I think that's so silly. Okay? And for people who don't eat vegetables at all, how are you even going to poop? You I'm going to have to fight you on that. I've tried carnivore. I no, I've tried I've tried carnivore and I did not have any problem. I think my my gut had figured it out how to do it without fibers. You're one and, of the lucky ones. I remember you mentioning that to me. Yes. Yes. The okay. other thing you always mention when you're doing your coaching your clients and I well people clients. that I, I, I you guess, know I, well People. Okay. followers <laughs> um, is the amount of sleep that they need to get okay and now, that is super important it is it is and a lot of us in modern world we are experiencing uh, sleep deprivation okay now do you know why sleep is important because number one that's when your body mends all the stuff okay that's when your internal organ organs mend uh, it sort of like regenerates, yeah. That's when your muscles build, all right? And the cells sort of like, everything's regrowing. All the good stuff's happening when you're sleeping. But one of the key points to why lack of sleep will bugger up your progress when it comes to weight loss is simply this. Without sleep, your body gets stressed. When your body is stressed, your hormones just go crazy, okay? You're gonna lose hair, you're gonna feel like crap, you're gonna be angry. Your period, if you're a woman, is going to go wonky, all right? And that True. is all due to not having enough nutrients in your body and not having enough sleep because your body is stressed. When your body is stressed, your hormones go crazy. And it's all about the hormones, really, because if you're not in balance, it doesn't matter what diet you're following, it's going to fail. Simple as that. Yes. So sleep is important. Yeah? Uh, oh, back to the poop. I still want to talk about the poop. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. <laughs> I did carnivore. I did carnivore for two weeks and I was stuffed up for one and a half weeks. I swear to God, okay, I will never do it again. So my take on that is that everybody's body is different. So yes. if you want to know if you want to Did you to load up on it, cheese? Okay? Did you take a lot of cheese? God, no. 
Okay, cheese is a treat. Cheese is not. No, no, no. When you were on a carnivore, I just want to see what level of carnivore. No, I didn't. I didn't touch any cheese. I only meat. Because most of people who get constipated on a carnivore, it's because of a lot of cheese and dairy that take. No. Dairy. Dairy is lactose. It's toes. Anything that ends with toes is going to yes. be a problem. Okay. So cheese, that's another thing. A lot of people who start on keto think that cheese is carb lunch. It really isn't. You can't do that. Cheese is a treat. And even then, you know, you can't have more than a certain portion. You know, if I eat too much cheese, what happens? I bloat. I bloat, I water retent, and I generally feel like crap. And I, my skin, my skin just goes crazy. All right. Cheese is not a good thing. Believe me. It's allowed on keto and it has to be hard cheese, by the way. All right? Yes. Because most of the lactose has been removed. Most of. That's the key. Most of. Not all of it. Yes. Most. Okay. Not all of it. So if you're doing like cups and cups of cheese every day, I mean, that just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. No. Yeah. So no. All right. So I couldn't, I, I couldn't poop basically. Too much info. I know. But I couldn't and I stopped and I was regular again. So that's amazing. Okay. Mm. Perfect. Um, two other areas that I want to, three actually areas, one of them would be fasting, workouts, and then the variety of food when you do on your keto reset, clean keto. I remember, let's talk about the variety of food. A lot of people um, go to challenges and do all egg um, or all other stuff that I want to mention. But I have, I'm going to yes. say it again. Yes. So I remember when you were talking about your keto reset, you were you were mentioning that your meals should be different. If you're having chicken for lunch, yes. you need to have pork or steak or red meat or fish. It has to be different. What are your reasons behind that? Okay. For the, for wanting a variety of stuff. Okay. Yes. No, you know it really daily me. It uh, in me. one day. Okay, let's talk about the day. Yeah, you're already eating so little. Okay, you want to make sure that you're getting as many different types of nutrients as possible. Different nutrients, different minerals, different vitamins. So if you're eating the same thing over and over and over and over again, you're going to lose out on other stuff. Okay. So for me, my rule is very, very easy. If I have chicken at lunch, I must have another meat at dinner, and the vegetables ideally should not be the same. Now I understand that people are busy. And some people have to food prep, like you, all right? You food prep way ahead. You do one whole week or five days or three days. You know, everything's packed nicely. You grab and go. Now, I'm not saying that it's not a good thing, all right? Eating well is still better than going out and grabbing an in and out burger, okay? All right? All right? It's, it's a good thing, but it's not healthy in the long run. You can't do that. You can't have, like, chicken breast for five days and just lettuce. I mean... What nutrients are you getting? And you're getting the same thing over and over again. It doesn't make sense. People do a lot of egg fast. It's very popular for them to lose weight. And I, and I no, have to. Be, I'm sorry if I, I don't mean to hurt any. You okay? I don't mean to hurt anybody, but I do not like yeah. egg fast. I agree with you. Absolutely, it's abnormal. Okay, and you will see weight loss because you're gonna gain it all back. Okay, it all back. Exactly. Have you ever met someone who's been on an egg fast and gone, yeah, I lost 10 pounds, and then ask them again two months later or one month later, did you keep the 10 pounds off? I can bet you the answer will be, okay, I can't anymore. It's no. That's why they go it's on the challenge time. because, yeah. It's always It's just going back and forth. And you're stuffing up your body. So why, why do that, right? Treat your body right, and you know your, your results will stay. Yeah, that's definitely. No egg fast, please. That's <laughs> <laughs> the other thing, and you know, I have on my page, I have challenges for 72 hours fasting here and there. I have fasted a lot. But recently, not very recently, um, I have been reading about how you can, when you're on keto, you don't need to fast as much. So you get a lot of benefits on fasting, on keto that you would get on fasting. Literally, it's a good alternative for fasting but try to explain that to some people who do think that 16 8 hours of fasting is 
a must no. on keto. And I know you did not fast a, uh, at all, even when Nothing. you were in your weight loss journey. Ex <laughs> right. I do, I do rested so, fasting, all right? Rested fasting, when I sleep. When I sleep, I'm fasting, okay? I'm not being good. funny, yeah. really, honestly. Look at okay? Rested fasting, that's the only fasting I do. Now, the problem with a lot of um, newbies is they think, like you've mentioned, if you want to do keto, you need to fast. That is so untrue, okay? Fasting has nothing to do with the practicing keto. Okay? Now, I'm not saying I don't think that fasting does wonders for you. Fasting is fantastic for autophagy, for cellular healing, for you know, getting rid of inflammation, all of that stuff. It is brilliant. People who have cancer fast, and it heals their cells, all right? So fasting is an incredible health tool. But if you're looking at fasting as a will, it ain't gonna work out, okay? Initially, of course, you will lose weight because you're not feeding your body. Duh. Okay, if you maybe you're your losing body, your lean you muscles. You won't lose your muscle if you're working out. Okay, and if you're eating, oh, yeah, wait, sorry. I mean, you're talking about if you're fasting, you're, yes, yeah, if you're fasting, fasting it's you're, possible that you're I, losing I, muscle. That weight is coming from your muscle that you don't want to go there. You don't want to lose muscles. No, wait, but I think, I think we're actually going too far into the fasting conversation. I need to point something out first, okay? Uh, in my case, I always say no fasting on my reset, not for five weeks minimum, okay? And if you can go with non fasting and you can still see results, keep it up until three, four months later. Why? Very easy. Now, in school, we all learned about nutrition and the food pyramid and all that BS that they fed us and everything was wrong, okay? But the <laughs> one thing they got right, the one singular thing they got right was that if you don't feed yourself, if you starve yourself, your metabolic rate is going to go to hell. Yes. You'll slow it down, okay? And if you think about it, yeah, fasting, is you starving your body. Now, you go, but I lose so much weight when I do it. Duh, right? You're not feeding yourself. Of course, you're going to lose weight. Why? Because the basis of keto is that if, well, you basically want your body to burn stored fat, right? And if you're fasting and you're not feeding yourself, your body's going to burn stored fat. So you will lose fat. But the problem comes in when you stop the fasting as a weight loss tool. Then your body goes, whoa, wait a minute, she stopped it. Okay, maybe the famine's over. I think I better stock up on food, all right, and change yeah. it to stored fat and just keep holding on to it in case it happens again. Again, if it happens again. Do it, the more stuffed up you get. So it doesn't work as a weight loss tool, okay? So my advice, my personal, and this is my view. So, you know, if you don't agree, or not you, but I mean, whoever's watching, if you don't agree, I agree. That's fine. Okay, the thing is, if you want to start fasting, do it, but not for at least five to six weeks prior to you beginning keto, okay? Because you want to make your body attuned to how you intend to feed it for the rest of your life, okay? If, unless you tell me, okay, I'm gonna fast um, two days of the week until I'm 90, okay? So body, this is what I'm gonna do, and that's highly unlikely, okay? Don't do it. Just wait until you are fat adapted, or right? your body has kicked into a strong ketosis mode, and you know you want to think about carb cycling. Now, once you go there, once you get to that point, by all means, you want to start fasting, go ahead, whatever, okay? Because your body has adapted to fat adaptation. Oh, that's kind of like a yeah. It has adapted, all right. It is in keto mode, and no problems. But once you actually start out, like day three, I'm gonna fast it's going to blow up in your face. Trust yes. Me. Yeah. That's I have some people I, t tell me a lot of people are going to get their coach up, have but... Go ahead, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Yeah, what? I didn't hear you. No, what no you, you mentioned were saying about. a lot of people tell you Yes, a lot of people tell me that their coaches have given them um one day OMAD which is one meal per day and then followed by a 36 hour fasting and then another OMAD a day, 36 hours and another, yes. 
Now, if someone made me, I'm not making. I'm this, not even making up stories. No, 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 is, no, no. I, I know, but, but what I'm saying is, if someone told me that I have to eat like that for the rest of my life, I would tell them to go take a hike. Okay, there's no way. That's just absolutely <laughs> no. Omad, all right. And then, and then a fast. It should be something that comes naturally. You should enjoy yes. what you're doing because if you can't enjoy it, you can't sustain it. And if you can't sustain it, it will. Yeah. Agree? Yeah. No, I do not agree with trainers who, you know, say, oh, yeah, you have to fast for like two days, you know, water fast, egg fast, whatever, you know, I mean, that's just, no. sorry. Doesn't I'm with you on that. Away. I, I yeah. deal with that. And people should, people should. If it doesn't make sense, back to the first thing you mentioned, if it doesn't make sense, you shouldn't be doing it. Exactly. That's all. Simple. Yeah. That's all. My last question would be working out cortisol. Are you about to, are you fixing to leave? We have, uh, I think about no, two, three I'm minutes. Not, I'm not. I my, okay. my, my butt hurts, the cherry is kind of hard. Okay, okay, exercise and cortisol. Now there is such a thing as over exercising. Okay, there is. Now when I first started out uh, on keto, since we're talking about exercise, I couldn't do very much except walk. Uh, and me too. Just walking because it was heavy on the knees and it hurt me. Yeah, and I was huffing and puffing, it was terrible. So, what happened was after I lost quite a bit in three months, I started to run again. And I hadn't run in such a long time. And when I started running, there was no stopping me. I did it seven days a week, sometimes twice in a day. I lost the weight so fast, okay? I looked terrible. Well, by the end of the first year, you know, I looked skeletal. I looked stressed out. You know, my skin. I mean, it didn't make sense because in the beginning, all the exercise was great. Yeah. But after I actually hit my weight goals and I was trying to maintain it, doing that same amount of exercise just didn't work for my body. My body rebelled. My cortisol levels shot up. All right. Because I'm a runner. I run. Okay. And that stresses your body. Running stresses your body, you know, and it builds up a lot of free radicals, all right? I don't know if your, your followers know about free radicals, but it's true, all right? Because it's stress. It's a stressor to your body. Therefore, you know, free radicals and all that. And my skin just looked terrible. I looked skeletal. I didn't look healthy. I was skinny looking healthy. And I think I look quite healthy now, okay? And the thing is... You do. The first thing... <laughs> I wasn't fishing for a compliment. But yes, I feel healthy and I, I think I look healthier because I really cut down on my workout time. Okay, you see people awesome. hours and hours and hours at the gym. And you know what? You know what? The book that changed my life when it came to workouts was by Tim Ferriss. I think it was called um, The Four Hour Body. Okay? Nice. Let's go good. This guy, this guy is so amazing. He did every form of experimental workouts all right just to see how it would affect his body and he took like notes and he did a full report on like how much time blah, blah, blah. it was a very interesting read tim first go look for it yeah <laughs> and so basically what what i found out from tim was that you don't need to work out hours on end to get the body you want and for the fit level that you want you know you, you just need now, what I do is if I have no time, I just do 100 kettlebell swings and I'm done for the day and it takes me under 20 minutes, sometimes 15, you know? And I'm strong, I'm healthy, I'm fit. I work out maybe, well, prior to the quarantine, I used to run, I still used to run about four days a week. I used to do seven days a week, twice sometimes, yeah? Now yeah. I only do four days a week and there are times when it work, because it work. I don't work out for two or three weeks. Because I'm stuck in a studio and it's still fine. My body mm -hmm. doesn't break down, okay? So exercise is important, especially if you don't want to have loose muscles and have saggy skin and all that. It is really important. But what, a, what, what about you doing? What about those people who tell you should not exercise on keto diet? Like falling from the other side. All right. Now, if I, if I tell you not to exercise... Because of cortisol kicks you out of ketosis and at working out does that for you how okay. crazy that is it is absolute madness okay now first thing when you are doing keto you are training your body to burn fat for fuel yeah that's number one but you also need your metabolic rate to 
get fixed because as we get older, your metabolism slows down. Okay? The only way for your metabolic rate to get revved up again and to learn to burn at optimum again is to move your body. You need that cardio, all right? Even if it's like a anaerobic, all right, or if it's aerobic, it doesn't matter. You can be doing like high reps with your light weights and you still get an aerobic effect and in turn, it revs up your meat, okay? So you need to work out. A lot of people say, oh yeah, guess what? I lost like 50 pounds on keto without working out a single day. Is that healthy? Do you think that's healthy for your heart or your metabolism or for the rest of your body? You know, it's not. But a lot of people, weight, but... a lot of people brag about the number of ketones and that's, I'm not saying that's bad, but that t also tells you that you're not using it in your body. I don't know if you have tried it or not tracking your ketones after you work out, they go down because your body is using them for energy. But a lot of people are bragging, not moving. Look, I'm fully in ketosis. I'm so deep in ketosis and I'm not working out. Well, that's not healthy. Exactly. It's really not healthy. It's like having a really nice Mercedes Benz, all right, a brand new sleek one. And then the engine is crap. <laughs> it's an old engine. You didn't, you, didn't, you didn't like change the engine or like engine or whatever, okay? The outside looks great, but it's going to break down anyway, all right? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't work. You, you do need to work out. And you're right about the ketones. I mean, so what if you're really high on the ketone count? You know, you're right. You're not using it up. What the hell, right? And yeah. you know what? Mm -hmm. Just like macros, I've never ever used any form of keto tracking. I don't use strips. I don't use that glucometer. I don't use the blood meters. For me, it's unnecessary. I know. You know. You know if you're in ketosis. You feel good. You look good. Your weight drops if you're trying to lose weight, okay? You don't need to have to prick yourself <laughs> to find out or pee on something to find out. Right. And there's so many variables. Anyway, you know, okay, my friend, Rich. It's okay, not about um, tracking your ketones. This is not a game of <laughs> tracking your ketones. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a different game. That it's, it's not that. Correct. Absolutely correct. Okay, it's not about how your ketone levels are. It's the results you're seeing, basically. You don't need to spend money on all those contraptions, you know. Oh, another thing, I don't believe in keto products. All right. Just since we're there, okay, I don't believe... Neither I, do I. So clean keto is just meat and vegetables. It should not cost yeah. you money. It costs you money if you're going to bake, all right? If you're going to go for the almond meal and the flowers and the xanthan and, you know, all that stuff. But if you don't, it is really inexpensive, correct? Le and uh, I just don't understand yeah. how sometimes, you know, people's view and whole thing gets so skewed. But So we have... Uh, it just gave me... Uh, a reminder that I have about one minute for this okay. live. We didn't get to the questions, but hopefully okay. next time we okay. are going to do another live. We'll figure out the time and we'll let you know okay. if Lily has the time. I do uh, have thank time you. I'll, I'll, I'll Absolutely. Here. Thank Just you. Okay, if so you want to wrap it up saying something in conclusion, uh, I think we have less than one minute. Okay. In conclusion, you know, don't ever get so set on thinking that keto has to be a certain way, okay? A lot of people are gonna tell you you need to fast, you need to count macros, you need to monitor this, monitor that, you need this, you need NCT oils and all, you don't really. You just eat with common sense, all right? That's all you need to do. It shouldn't cost you a lot of money, number one. Number two, you will know if you're in ketosis. It works really, really fast. And this is key, okay? This, this one point is really key. If you're losing only 10 pounds after one month and you're really overweight, okay, chances are you're not on keto. So, you know, don't ever second guess yourself. If you're not, you're not. Be honest with yourself, okay? And whatever it is, don't keto if you're a newbie. Please, if you're going to do it, Go all the way. Do it clean. Because if you're going to start with dirty keto, you're going to get stuck in that mode. Number one. Lily, it's not going to let me. Uh, I have to cut it right okay. now because it's okay. not going to let me save it. It was a pleasure talking with you. We'll do this again soon. Thank you okay. so much. Have a great one. All right. Bye. Bye.